pushing patches, deploying applications, refreshing operating systems, controlling configurations, enforcing security policies, all with complete automation and all without ever having to walk the halls of your business again. You're a Windows administrator, and you're about to experience the Administrator's Force Multiplier, System Center Configuration Manager 2012. My name's Greg Shields, and I've been working with Config Manager since the years back when it had a completely different name, SMS, or Systems Management Server. You know, back in those days, SMS also used to stand for Slow Moving Software. A lot's changed since back then, and today Config Manager has become one of the most powerful tools a Windows administrator can wield for managing your network and making sure you get home on time every night. Now, while Config Manager is powerful, it's, it's anything but easy. Over the next 20 nuggets, we're going to spend a lot of time together. You're going to watch your head explode. But don't worry, we'll be picking up the pieces together and reassembling them in a completely new way that will focus your energies on complete automation for Windows. You know, it's no lie. With a well-constructed Config Manager infrastructure and a little bit of upfront effort, you can actually and honestly create a Windows environment that almost never needs troubleshooting again. You know, we're a long way from that point, and you've still got a lot of automations left to build, but ultimately, that's our goal. Complete automation for Windows. You're going to learn what you need to get started in this series. I'm looking forward over the next 20 nuggets or so to spending a whole bunch of time talking with you about how exactly you can successfully implement Config Manager 2012 in your infrastructure. Now, this series talks about how it relates to the 70-243 exam. But don't worry if uh, certification is not your goal. The goal here is really helping you understand exactly what you need to know for success with Configuration Manager. Very different than a lot of the, 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 the books that you can read and a lot of the articles you can read out on the internet, this series is designed to give you a soup to nuts, start to finish, all the way from design through implementation guidance for how you can implement Config Manager 2012, and also, at the same time, how you can implement it and use it with best practices. You know, as I said, I've been working with Config Manager now for going on a decade or more, and consequently, there are some smart ways to use Config Manager, and there are also some ways in which you can use it and not really get the benefits that you were really hoping out of a solution, out of such a solution. And so in this series, what we're going to talk about is, well, first and foremost, what you need to know for the exam, but more importantly, how you can make best use of this new technology in creating that environment of complete automation. Now, in this first nugget, what I want to do is spend a little bit of time helping you understand just Configuration Manager, Configuration Manager in relation to System Center, and also the things you need to know for that 70-243 exam. I want to start first by talking about just Configuration Manager as it relates to the, the greater scope of Microsoft certification. Right now today, as of the release of this video and the series, uh, the Config Manager certification is the 70-243 exam. And what that nets you, if you when you pass is an MCTS, a Microsoft uh, Certified Technology Specialist certification in administering and deploying System Center 2012 Configuration Manager. Now, what's interesting is that while the specific test that's re that you can take as it relates to Configuration Manager is one that only nets you an MCTS, the information, the knowledge that you learn in this course and in this, this series is going to help you pretty dramatically when you get around to taking that MCSC Private Cloud certification that so many people are talking about today. With the release of Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012, private cloud is becoming one of the major ways in which we can deploy an infrastructure. And the additional exams, after you pass the initial MCSE, MCSA exams, these additional exams, 70-247 and 70-246, at a very high level, look to Configuration Manager and the rest of System Center as the tool for facilitating delivering services atop a private cloud. So while neither of these exams specifically talk to Configuration Manager, or at least in the titles, the knowledge that you gain here will be extremely valuable, almost invaluable, in helping you achieve that MCSE private cloud. Now, with that in mind, 
there are a number of people or an intended audience that Microsoft suggests are individuals that may probably do well on this exam. And this is something that I've gathered right off of Microsoft's website. Now, this exam is designed for candidates that have System Center Configuration Manager 2012 experience, are comfortable with Windows Server, and also security and networking experience in an enterprise environment. If you spend any time with dealing with Windows, if you understand the registry, if you know how software installs, and if you're comfortable with the file system inside of Windows, you're going to do fairly well with the, the concepts that are necessary here with this uh, exam and also with Configuration Manager in general. I'm going to help you understand how you need to refactor your thinking to eliminate a lot of the manual steps that you go through in delivering services in your IT environment and converting them into automated steps so that once you accomplish a task once, you'll never really need to accomplish that task again. Now here also we talk about how candidates should have some experience with basic SQL Server and Windows PowerShell. If you have really very fundamental understanding of Windows SQL Server. If you know how to install a database, that's probably the most that you're going to need at this point for being successful with this course. I'm going to show you a couple of quick tricks, a couple of little secret hints that I've developed over the years for how you can leverage SQL in generating some of these queries that you'll be creating out of Configuration Manager data. But don't worry if you've never done it before, because I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step process to accomplish it right here in the series. Also in terms of Windows PowerShell, if you have a rudimentary understanding of Windows PowerShell, you'll do just fine with this series. We don't spend much time with PowerShell here in this series, but Configuration Manager runs on top of PowerShell. And so some of the commands, in fact, all of the commands that exist in Configuration Manager can be accomplished also through using PowerShell. Talk a little bit about mobile device management and application configuration experience. If you have never packaged software before, don't worry. I'm going to show you some of the steps that you need to know to be successful in packaging software, no matter if we're talking about direct software installation or application virtualization. We'll even talk about how you can deliver mobile applications to the mobile devices on your network as well. So be prepared because some of these, some of these, these nuggets in this series are going to focus in on the art of using Configuration Manager and not just the click-by-click -click science. Again, giving you that value added over what you're going to find out of articles on TechNet. Even if you're not a System Center Configuration Manager Administrator, if you have experience with Active Directory, if you have experience well, with Exchange to a, to a minimal amount, but mainly if you have experience with Windows Server or even Enterprise Desktops, you're going to do just fine again with this series. You know, the, the world tends to break, the, the world of IT tends to break down into IT people that tend to focus on servers and then IT people that tend to focus on desktops. And if you're the type of person that tends to focus on desktops and find that, that the management of desktops is where your interests lie, you'll be particularly well suited for some of the topics that we'll talk about here in Configuration Manager. Whereas Configuration Manager can be used for managing your server infrastructure, the vast majority of, of Config Manager installations are used for managing and monitoring uh, the desktop infrastructure inside an organization. So those desktop administrators are going to be very well suited for success here with Configuration Manager. A couple of notes on some of the statistics associated with the exam. Uh, again, this is the 70-243 exam. And uh, this is uh, one of the new wave of exams that's been released with the System Center and Windows 2012 wave. What's interesting about this wave is that Microsoft is actually taking kind of a step back in terms of providing a lot of detail about the contents of the exam. Back in the day, we used to know how many questions you would receive on the exam and how much time you would receive to complete the exam. But these days, that information is just a little bit harder to gather because Microsoft is keeping that close at vest in order to protect the, the security of the exam. Now, there are a couple of useful, just kind of hints that Microsoft provides for how to be successful. And these are some that I've literally copied directly off of Microsoft's website. Here, in terms of scoring, there is no penalty for guessing on the, your score. If you see uh, an answer, it's better for you to answer it than to leave it not answered, because you're not going to receive negative credit for, a, for an incorrect score. If there are multiple choice questions, in which you will find multiple choice questions on these exams, well, if you end up not answering all of the correct selections, you're not going to get any credit at all. Effectively, there is no partial scoring for any of these questions. Now, some of the questions, and this is interesting, not a lot of people actually know this, but some of the questions on the exam may not actually be scored at all. 
Microsoft occasionally will throw some questions on there that they may be trying to determine whether or not that question is a good question to ask in the future as a scored question. And so consequently, sometimes you'll end up with the questions that aren't scored at all. If you see something that doesn't really look right, don't sweat it. It may be one of those questions. Now, whereas we don't actually know much about the exam and how many questions that are out there, we do know that a passing score is set to be 700 and they, out of a total or out of a maximum of 1,000. Now, that said, knowing that the passing score is 700 really doesn't give you a lot of information because 700 does not necessarily mean that uh, a passing score means passing 70% of the questions on the exam. Different questions will be given different weightings. And so at the end, when you end up with all the scores of the correct questions that you've answered, if your answer or your, your total ends up more than 700, well, then you've passed the test. Down here at the bottom, we also talk about uh, the fact that the exam is currently administered through Prometric. In order to pa or take the exam, you'll have to go to prometric.com slash Microsoft, give them 150 bucks, and then they'll set you up for the next available seating for taking that exam. We have here in this series, we're going to spend a lot of time over the next 20 nuggets or so talking about exactly what's necessary in order to go from having no config manager at all to having a complete and fully functional configuration manager infrastructure with all the roles set up and in place. And so in order to do that, what I've done is take the content that exists as it relates to System Center and as it relates to Config Manager 2012 and broken it apart into the types of topics or the types of activities that you will need to accomplish at various steps along your learning path. And so what we have here is a, a beginning that starts with, with this nugget and also the next nugget, where we talk a lot about actually just simply getting the our, our, our architecture of Configuration Manager down and understood. You have to really understand what all the pieces are that make up a Config Manager infrastructure before we can actually ever go and install any of the pieces. Now, once we accomplish that part, there's a couple of nuggets here where we'll spend some time talking about installing, setting boundaries, deploying clients, and then collecting inventory. These four nuggets are here to begin the very basics of getting the, the rudimentary Config Manager infrastructure up and running. Once we finish these four nuggets, we'll have everything in place because we'll have our clients correctly connecting into their Config Manager server and delivering, delivering their inventory so we can begin creating queries and creating reports from that information. With that information, then we go through a number of different nuggets here where we talk about deploying. These nuggets here, nuggets 9 through 14, are all about enacting change on the clients that you have connected into your Config Manager infrastructure. And we go through all the different areas in which change can actually be enacted on those clients. So how do you prepare packages? How do you generate packages that can be deployed with Config Manager? How do you generate packages that can be deployed through App V, which has now been baked into Config Manager? How do you then distribute those via the old way using packages and programs or the new way using applications? These two are actually created in the way that they are because the information you need to know in number 11 starts with the information you need to know in number 10. Once we understand software distribution, next up is operating systems and then software updates via WSUS, then managing compliance baselines. And then from that point on, we move into some of the more incidental topics in Configuration Manager. Metering software usage, dealing with security settings, dealing with mobile devices, and managing your client and site statuses. Finally, concluding with number 20 down here, which is where we take our single server and single site hierarchy and expand it out to however large we need our infrastructure to be. For most of this series, we're going to stick with a single server hierarchy, which is perfect enough for your demo environment, perfect enough for you to learn on. And then once we understand all the intricacies of Config Manager in operations, we then break that environment apart so that we can distribute it to a national organization, a multi-site organization, or even a global organization. With that series in mind, then, we want to spend as much time as possible aligning the, the, the knowledge that we're learning and the knowledge that we're talking about really with the exam objectives. And I can't stress enough that the point of this series is not directly there to help you with the exam. The, the, what we're talking about relates very directly to exam objectives. And in fact, you'll find with each of these introductory sort of sheets that we work off of, I'll have a little objectives item down there that I might not talk about, 
but that should give you a clue for the content in that nugget and where that actually relates in terms of the object objectives you need to know for the exam. That said, while we're learning Config Manager, being aware of what the objectives are, as well as what the, the, the load of those objectives and how much we need to know each objective is also important. Recognizing that about 14% of the exam has to do with managing OS deployment, 14% with deploying applications, 11% with compliance settings, 12% with managing sites. All of these become fundamentally important as you go about going through your studying process to ensure that you're successful with that exam. Again, with each one of these that you see here, I'll be showing you how each one of these, down at the bottom of the, of the screen, right at the beginning of each, each nugget, how those relate to your path for study. Now, if you've listened to any of uh, my other CBT Nugget series, you know that sometimes we get just a little bit overboard with the number of virtual machines that are required in order to, well, to do anything with our CBTN network. Now, with this single exception of perhaps the very last nugget and probably the 18th nugget, we're talking about mobile devices, this is the entirety of the network that's required if you plan on following along. And I really recommend spending some time building yourself some virtual machines so you can follow along as you learn from what we're talking about here in this series. And the good news about this is that because there's only a domain controller, or a config manager server, and a client for the vast majority of this series, well, you don't have to have an extremely powerful computer in order to follow along. If you have these three machines, well, you're going to do just fine for most of this series. Finishing up, though, I want to thank you once again for spending time with me to learn about Configuration Manager. This is my 16th series for CBT Nuggets, and it's been a long, long history that I've had in helping people understand how to use Microsoft and other technologies. Configuration Manager really is that administrator's force multiplier. I kind of joke with people that if you want to make sure that you never, ever, ever get terminated from your business, become the system center person, because there's no better way to make yourself completely invaluable as a member of your IT organization. I want to thank you once again. We're going to spend a lot of time together, and I look forward to it throughout this entire process. Welcome to CBT Nuggets, Mastering System Center Configuration Manager 2012, and preparing for that all-important 70-243 exam. Once again, I'm Greg Shields. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.